Now let's look at inserting a software instrument and recording some MIDI data. I'll start with a brief explanation of MIDI. Firstly, MIDI is not audio, you can't hear it. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and is actually a standard but generally tends to be used to refer to MIDI data. This data is just a set of instructions for a musical instrument or piece of hardware that understands MIDI and tells the hardware what to do. That might be a synthesizer, an effects unit or a piece of software. The instruction might be to change the patch or current sound, what notes to play or any other function that the unit understands. For the purposes of this tutorial, we are interested in controlling a software synthesizer or instrument. The instrument is the part that makes the sound and turns the MIDI data into audio. First then, let's look at inserting a soft synth. We saw the instrument tab in the browser earlier and that's what we're going to use. We just navigate to the required instrument and then drag and drop it into the track view clip pane. I'm going to drag Studio Instruments drum kit into this project and as soon as we drop it, the Insert Soft Synth dialog box opens up. Here, there are several options. For now, I'm going to choose the Simple Instrument Track option, which will insert one track that combines the MIDI data track and the synth audio output into one single track. We'll look at this shortly. I'll repeat that, but this time I'm going to insert TTS1 and we're going to create a separate MIDI data track and synth audio output by choosing those options from the dialog. There are several other options in this dialog, including whether to show the soft synth interface or properties page, insert a folder, and how many synth output tracks to create. We're just going to create the first stereo output, but some synths have several audio outputs for multi-channel playback. You'll now see that this time, we have one MIDI track and a stereo audio track that is known as an instrument track, because its input is assigned to the soft synth output. To recap then, we now have a MIDI track for the data which outputs to the soft synth. Any data on this track, either in a clip or coming from a MIDI source, such as a keyboard attached to it, is sent to the synthesizer. The synth then follows those instructions and in the case of notes starts to play them, which it outputs as audio. This audio goes to the track that the output is assigned to and this is known as an instrument track. In the case of a simple instrument track, the MIDI track and audio track are combined to hide some of the routing away and use less space, but the principle is the same. Similar to how we set up an audio track, we need to assign an input to the MIDI track. If you don't have a MIDI controller, you can just drag a MIDI clip into this track from the browser, in which case there's no need to worry about the input. Alternatively, you can open the Piano Roll view and draw the data in. We'll be looking at the Piano Roll view when we get to editing MIDI. In this example, I'm going to use a PCR keyboard that I have attached to my system. Click on the input drop down to choose an input in a similar way to an audio track. I'm going to select PCR Omni. Omni just means it will respond to all incoming MIDI data from the PCR regardless of the channel. I could just select one channel, but I then need to make sure that the PCR is transmitting on that one. To send incoming data from this track to the synth, we need to make sure that the input echo button is on and lit. The output is already taken care of by Music Creator when we inserted the synth, but if we were setting this up manually, we would change the output to the synth, in this case, TTS1. Now when I press keys on my keyboard, you'll see the meter light to indicate that there is incoming data. These meters are different to audio meters, there's no need to set levels as it is just data, not audio. Next, we need to assign a sound to the synth or choose a patch. The exact process here will depend on the instrument, but usually we are able to select a bank, patch and channel number from the drop downs on the MIDI track. If there aren't any options available here, then we probably need to open the synth interface and load sounds from there. Open a SOS synth instruments interface by double clicking on the small icon in the track header. At this point, we can now hear the audio being generated by the synth. To record the MIDI data into the MIDI track, 
arm the track for recording and then press record. Settings such as the metronome, tempo extractor are set up as we've already seen in the audio recording video. Of course we can also loop and punch record MIDI in the same way that we did audio. You'll notice that one difference between an instrument track and audio track is the instrument track doesn't have a record arming button but has a waveform preview button instead that will create a temporary waveform as the track plays back. To turn MIDI data into audio on a permanent basis, the track needs to be bounced to audio. To do this, select the MIDI track and its associated audio track and select Bounce to Track from the menu. Audio can be created on a temporary basis by using the Freeze Synth function. This can be accessed by using the Freeze Synth button or from the right click context menu. The synth is bounced down to audio using the options set in Freeze Options dialog also accessed by right-clicking on the Freeze Track button or via the Track Right-Click context menu. You may find Freezing Synth helpful if projects are very CPU intensive as audio is less taxing on a system than playing back audio. We'll look at Freezing Synth again later. There's also a function on MIDI track known as Input Quantize. Quantizing is a term that refers to notes being automatically lined up to the tempo grid. We'll look at quantizing in detail when we get to editing. Input quantizing is similar, but any notes that are slightly off the grid are moved to the grid as they are recorded. It's turned on and off from the right hand strip of the inspector. Here the resolution can be chosen as well as various options set to make the result slightly less mechanical. There are several settings here, including the resolution. That means which notes are moved based on how far they are from the grid and by how much. They can be used to make the result a little less robotic, which is one of the downsides of quantizing. If every note is in perfect time, it will sound very robotic because no human can play that well, and it's the small timing fluctuations that create the feel of the music. There are times, however, when it can be helpful, and it's there if you need it. If you quantize the input and then decide you don't like it, choose Undo from the Edit menu, which undoes the quantizing but leaves the recording as it was played, along with any imperfections. Once the MIDI data is recorded, it's stored in a very similar way to audio, be it in its own lanes or tracks depending on your preferences. Once recorded, it's there for us to edit which we'll look at in later videos.